Welcome to Lizzie's Workshop and this week's episode of Mixed Media Monday. I am starting off with a stencil for my background and some 3D matte gel. And this stencil is a Prima stencil and it's 12 by 12. So this is a really large canvas. And each time that I took the stencil off, I went and washed it because I was being a little bit finicky with the background. And I kind of wanted a little bit of a perfectionist start point. So I went through and made sure that all of the um, canvas was covered in a nice thick layer of the uh, matte gel and that's going to give it like a 3D effect of a cracking wall in the background. And if you notice how I keep the gel nice and thick on there, that's because I do want them to be nice heavy cracks in the canvas. The next step I'm going to do is cut some ribbon and the reason I'm cutting this ribbon is that I have three little buckles that I want to put on there as kind of a basically like a title bar. I'm not putting any words on this canvas um, just separately. I'll put some metal elements on it that have words in them but um, I wanted to kind of create an eye, eye line or a sight line across the top of the canvas. So once I thread the ribbon through the buckles I grab my 3D gel again and I put it in this little container so that I don't have my big container open for long periods of time. Um, and then I just kind of glue it down in a couple spots. And one of the problems that I had with this part of the project was that the ribbon stretched. As soon as it got a little bit of moisture in it, the ribbon stretched and buckled and I had to wait for the ribbon to dry for it to go back nice smooth and tight. So every time I would, you know, retighten it, it would just go loose again because of the the give of the ribbon. But it worked out. I got it all figured out. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this old piece of lace and I'm going to cut it in half because it's just simply too wide. And then I'm going to um, shred it a little bit and rough it up a little bit so it looks more like a mixed media piece of lace and then I'm going to put some matte gel all along the edge here in a nice thick layer and grab one of those pieces of the lace and put it on there. Now this whole project, this whole first half of the project, my main point is to go for textures. I'm not looking at color coordination at all and you'll see that as I go on in this project. And the reason for that is um, try, I'm trying to take this in the direction that um, Finnebear's projects usually go or often go where she creates all these you know assemblage of textures and then she covers over them with gesso and then she she paints it how whatever color she wants on top of that so what I'm really focusing on is just the textures that I'm creating just the piles of things I'm creating and if you ask me where I got all this stuff I went through and I shopped my stash and I went through all the drawers and just pulled out a whole bunch of elements I went through my um, metal stuff drawer and I went through my flowers drawer and my doilies and um, I just kind of pulled a whole bunch of stuff out and if if I were to zoom out there would be a gigantic piles of stuff all the way around my workstation there around my craft mat. Uh, next thing that I pulled out is ch a length of chain and then I cut it into three lengths that might work out and my thought process here is that I wanted to um, follow a little bit of trends. So I'm really making this for myself, for my craft room, and when I make things for my craft room, I try to incorporate a lot of trends into that idea. So um, one of the huge trends right now is to use doilies, and another one is to use lace and ribbon, and another one is to use metal components, and one of the big things right now, I think brought on by uh, Robin Marie I can't remember her last name, but she's really big into the um, dream catchers right now, and that's really that trend has really caught on quite heavily. So I wanted to incorporate all kinds of trends into this because it's kind of like a timepiece for me that, and it'll it'll go on my wall in my workshop, and that's where it's going to stay. So and the other the other thing, the reason that I'm going to cover this with Jesso and follow Finn's um, style is because she's quite trendy right now as well. 
So this piece ends up being a combination of things that I love and trends that are happening right now. So I'm going through and I'm just cutting up all these, you know, 2D flowers and adding them on there. And once again, I'm still just thinking about textures. Um, in addition to textures, I'm thinking about odd numbers. So I'm adding in five of those cut up flowers and I added in three ribbons with the three buckles and I'm adding three chains and I'll add three of these giant flowers and I added one little round metal disc. Um, I'm trying to do everything in odd numbers and as I go through everything will stay in odd numbers and um, I even counted at the end to make sure that everything was in odd numbers and sometimes I didn't I didn't really worry too much about it I just kind of shoved things where they should go um, but if there was a thought process throughout this whole um, assembling process it was to look towards odd numbers and it was to look towards making sure that I had odd numbers within certain size categories and so on so there'll be three of these purple flowers dispersed across there and there's three of the giant roses and and um, I didn't count these little flowers but within each group or within each setting cluster there's going to be an odd number of them within those now the thing that I really loved about these little flowers is that um, they have so much texture to them. They have the cloth flower petals and then they have the super, super fuzzy centers. Um, and so I really like that texture part of them. And then I went through and finished that cluster and took that out of the, the video editing because I ended up going off screen. The next thing that I'm doing is I'm adding metal elements and um, some of these are just within my stash some of them are leftovers from a class I took with Finnebear and um, some of them are new elements like all those shiny little willow leaf shapes to the left of the canvas there those are um, from my dad's garage actually um, Finnebear in her class she said that it's really neat to go through um, old people's or other people's garages or your own garage or to go through and look for for textures and shapes and things that you wouldn't normally have in your own space but going in and going antiquing or looking at garage sales or you know going to the little the little old thrift shop and the hardware store and all that to look for things that would be unique within your project so I went into my father's garage and in there I discovered that he runs an online fishing tackle shop and so I stole a whole bunch of his fishing tackle well with his permission of course so I stole a bunch of his uh, the components for making fishing tackle and added them to this because those I love those willow leaf shapes later on I'm going to be using the little um, hooks the little assembly hooks that you would use to to put your hook on or I guess they're leaders or something where you, they're used to put the hook onto the uh, fishing line. I use some of those. Um, for feathers for my dream catcher I'm going to use some of the larger fish hook shape um, things, the spinner blades. And I just kind of keep going on. So like I said, I have piles and piles of stuff all around my little workstation there. And I'm just adding as I go. I'm really not thinking about this. I had my music blaring and I had everything sitting there. And I just kind of kept grabbing, you know, different sizes of things and shoving them wherever they wanted to fit. Sometimes things didn't, didn't go where I wanted them to. But um, otherwise, I just sh kept shoving things in there. So then I've got some buttons in there. There's, there's lots of everything. There's a little bit of wood. There's a little bit of plastic. There's a little bit of metal. There's a whole bunch of fabric. There's all, everything's in there. Now this is another fishing combination. Um, these are for making flies. They're also used in jewelry making. So I threw some beads on there and that's going to add a 3D dimension to this piece as well. And if you can guess how many of those are going to go on there. It's right three. Always an odd number. I thought of five, but it was getting to be too much, so I just put three on. And then it goes in there nicely like that. So what I'm doing with all these little flowers is I'm pretty sure that some of them are dollar store flowers or, um, you know those tiny little rosettes, they always have these 
metal stems on them. And what I'm doing is grabbing my pen and I'm swirling that stem around the pen so that it has a, a little bit of a curl to it. Instead of cutting it off and just putting the flower on, I'm adding more elements of more 3D elements by, by twirling that. And one of the things that sometimes it's hard to do when I add flowers is to get really fine textured details. So by keeping the metal coils on and just, just spinning them around and making them springy, that gives me that little tiny defined texture that I'm looking for. And then there's these little, there's these little um, circular things that have words on them, little charms, and I added those on there too, and there's three of those charms in there somewhere. And so as I, I added all the large elements first, and then I'm adding all, in all kinds of small elements, all kinds of different textures and different materials in around them just to add to those things and to spread them out and to give them the shape that I want and to give them a little bit more depth. And um, this is a giant fuzzy flower, but I tucked it in there just to make it fill that space. And um, I just kind of keep adding and keep adding and building it up until it feels like I'm done. Like there is no distinct stopping point and there is no you must stop here kind of direction. It's just one of those things where you just keep adding and adding and adding and then you just, at some point, you stop because there's no more to add. There's no more layers. There's no more anything to add. Here I'm adding in these little clay beads, and they're just textured, little balls of texture. And I'm adding in little wheels, little chunks of metal and gears and all kinds of things that are left over from other projects. And it's just kind of a, you know, free-for-all. Stuff everything wherever it can fit and then glue it down. And there we go. So once I have this to a point where I'm happy with where everything is, I decided to add a little bit of bling. And once again, I'm looking for that small texture, those little textures. I had thought about adding in um, little bits of, of mica flakes and glitter and all the glass beads and everything like that at the end. But um, I kind of forgot at the end of the project which was okay because I'd added in these beads and I had counted out 21. So I needed to, needed to find the home for 21 of these beads. And so I counted them out and I put them all on and glued them all down. And um, at the end of the project, I color them a different color so that they kind of pop off of the canvas and they do exactly what I wanted them to do anyways. So now what I'm trying to do is add the giant willow leaf spinner blades to this to the chains to act as feathers and I've got one that's really textured I've got one that's silver and one that's bronze I hadn't un I hadn't decided what I was going to do with them if I was going to paint them or what was going to happen with them um, and so I just kind of like attached them together and, and kind of let them dangle and I really wanted to um, have this grow outside of the canvas so I allowed these to hang down like a dream catcher where they drink. They hang below the level of the canvas. And then I, once those were on, I felt like this canvas was finished. So I went through and took some pictures of what it looks like. And once again, I really didn't pay attention to any colors because my intention was to cover it up with gesso. So as I go, I just kind of kept going and going until it was at a point where I could leave it. Now, I could have left this exactly as it is, just like this, but I wanted to go that extra step, which was a little bit intimidating because I love all the abundance of color in this piece and would have been quite content hanging it on my wall just like this. But I decided to take that extra step and to go the extra distance and cover it in gesso. Then the choice, white gesso or black gesso. So I flipped a coin, it came up tails, so it was black gesso. And that's the direction that I went. So I am sorry if this makes you dizzy. I had to fast forward this 10 times, um, make it 10 times fast, and then chop a bunch of pieces out just to get it within the 30 minute time frame. And this is the easiest place for me to do that because it's not all that interesting watching me paint. So the thing about this is that 
I had decided that I wasn't going to spray this canvas. I had decided I was just going to cover it in gesso. So I needed to make sure that I covered as well as I could. So I did have to have a, like a really thorough heavy coverage so that not all of the other colors would pop through or come out or anything like that. So I used the big fat heavy brush to get a nice thick layer and then I went through again with a smaller brush. This was a really long process as well. Um, this is probably the most tedious of the entire thing because you do want to get everything colored, covered in black and I'm one of those people who doesn't normally gravitate towards black and find it a little bit of um, a direction I wouldn't commonly go. Um, it's hard to stare at something black and to be covering up beautiful things with something black. Um, even though I knew that in the end I would absolutely adore this project, I did I, I did mourn the colors of the flowers just a little bit. So as I go, I'm just starting at the bottom of each of the flowers and each of the layers, and I'm going underneath layers, I'm going over top of layers. Um, as I go over things that are written, I make sure that I don't fill in the grooves with paint so that they're nice and smooth. I still want to be able to read things. That little plate, little bowl, has some details in it that I wanted to still see. And... Um, I definitely didn't want to glop it on so much that the details would go away from things. So really what it is is I'm just putting on a layer so that it will accept the paint layer as well. And so that I can create this this bit of um, you know uniformity from one side of the canvas to the other side of the canvas. And so now I'm trying to do this chain and you know painting a chain is really difficult to do and it's tedious because you have to do it over and over and over again if you want to be a perfectionist. So the ch every time the chain moves, metal grinds on metal and takes away any space that you had painted. So it bears the metal every time the chain moves. So I tried really hard not to move the metal a whole lot throughout this whole process, but I did have to end up painting the chain probably three or four times in order to achieve a black chain. One of the nice things about mixed media is that you don't have to be a perfectionist. Um, you don't have to have things perfectly straight. You don't have to have things perfectly balanced because it's a it's an expression of art that um, doesn't have rules really. So then once I'm I'm done all of the stuff, all of the gesso, I let it relax and I let it dry overnight. And I came back in the morning and grabbed my paints. And the paints that I chose to use were the silks paints because I wanted a little bit of a metallic um, shine to this. And so the first one that I grabbed was my darkest color and that was Vavoom Red. And it kind of leans towards a purpley kind of color and a really intense tone, but you can barely you can barely see it because of the way my lights are. I can see it, I can see the color in it, but it's hard to see it on camera to see what kind of shine that purple has. So I'm starting with the backdrop and I'm starting kind of with the base layer and then I'm just kind of going throughout and, and tinting elements with different colors. And this is one of those things where I just kind of started with one element and went one color at a time and covered up all of that same element with that one color. Um, I had already balanced out elements and textures so I didn't have to think about that anymore. I just had to find the elements. So here I'm coloring all of the little clay balls in the same color. I know that there are five clay balls within this uh, canvas so I'm going to just go through and color the five clay balls with the same color because I've already balanced them within the three groupings. The other thing is when it comes to the other flowers as well if I'm looking for floppy 2D flowers, I put. I know that I put five on there. When it comes to the giant roses, I know that I put three on there. So basically what it, it all comes down to is a simple, a simple thought that I've already balanced this in the creation of it. Now I can just enjoy myself and paint whatever colors I want to paint. So the colors that I've used, I've chosen five colors. If this was a smaller canvas, I probably would have only chosen three colors. But because this is a large, large canvas, I chose five. So they're all silks, which is an acrylic glaze. I started with Vaboom Red, then I went to Pink Anthurium, then uh, Pretty Prairie Dot, which is the green. Uh, the next one's going to be African Jade, and it's a blue. 
and the last one's going to be an iridescent red. And then I do flip back through them and add a little bit more green in at the end. And I do flip back through and add some more purple in the end and, and a whole bunch more pink. So just because you've, you've put the lid back on your paint doesn't mean you can't go back to it. Or just because you put your brush in the water doesn't mean you can't go back to it. I always make sure that I have enough brushes on hand that um, I can add, you know, I can put them in the water as often as I want. Now at the end of my projects I end up with a bucket full of brushes, but I don't have any contaminated paints and I don't have any contaminated project. So I went and well, as I was painting, I took the three dominant colors, um, the pink, the blue, and the green, and I used those to color the feathers for my, for my um, dream catcher. And you know, once it was hanging on my wall and I, I keep looking up at it, it often, it actually reminds me more of a grandfather clock with the weights hanging down than it does the dream catcher. So, even though I created it with a certain thought in mind, um, it'll still inspire me to create other projects later on. So I, if you notice, I'm not actually painting with this. I'm just putting some color on the brush and then skipping it across the top to create, to get the, bring the textures out. I don't want to bring the individual items out necessarily. I want to bring the textures out. I want to make the textures pop with color. And so I'm basic, that's basically what I'm doing. Right now I'm going through and I'm finding all of the sunflower type flowers and I'm just filling them up with the blue paint. Going around and around to bring out the black highlights of them and the black centers of them. And the centers are still wet with black gesso so I am getting a mix of the black in there as well. So then I'm gonna go over and um, I put this paint on here with like really thickly and the reason that I did that is I wanted that to have texture and shine and character as well. And once it, we get to the end, it really, really does have end up having that. One of the things that I did with the blue is I went around and I colored in things that were metal elements. And that really made them pop. Now, I didn't know what color this was going to be. It said iridescent red, and I was kind of like, okay, well, it's going to shine red. It doesn't shine red. It shines this beautiful, beautiful pink. And once I started putting it on there, I thought, hey, this is going to be my contrast color. Instead of putting on a white gesso to, to contrast against the black, I'm going to use this really powdery pink kind of color for that. And in now and knowing that this comes out this color, I know how I can use it on other projects as well. And so I did use it to create a smidge of a border along here and a little bit of a boundary so that your eye does stay within even though it wants to follow down and look at the feathers. It's going to come back because I've created a box for your, your eyesight to stay. So then I'm trying to highlight the words there, but it's not going to work. I'm going to have to add another color, darker color on top again in order for that to follow through and become what I want it to be. If I were just to, to, if you were to ask me what my favorite color was from this set, I would have to say it's the pink anthurium. I absolutely adore pink, and um, I often wear pink. I often have pink in my hair, and it just, I don't know why, but it seems to be my color of inspiration. And so I really wanted to bring those big plush pink flowers back and I wanted them to be this really bright shiny ir you know iridescent in your face kind of shiny glimmery thing so I ended up adding um, skiffs of this uh, pink paint to them and I ended up going over it about three or four times just to make sure it was nice and thick and heavy and as I was going through I couldn't decide what my favorite colors were um, if I had to pick one so I had to decide, okay, well, it's got to be the pink. And I was going to make all of the leaves the same color, but decided that I loved all three of them and we needed some more balance. So I pulled the color, three main colors from that big set of, of elements and pulled it down into the feathered ends. Now, this is kind of missing an element in here and 
I'm thinking about it as I'm painting. And so I go back to the dark purple and I'm pulling out all the little elements of dark purple. And sometimes where I've added too much of that iridescent red, I'm going through and adding some of this dark color in order to balance out all of that bright, bright um, iridescent red. So once I've got, once I seem like I'm balanced, I go back through with the green again and anything that I had colored originally in green ended up getting skiffed over with other amounts of color. So I went back through and colored those elements green again, especially because they were such fine detailed things like all the little coils from the roses and, and things like that. And the little metal um, willow leaf shapes as well, the fishing tackle. I painted that art sign probably 15 times <laughs> or at least once with every color because I just simply could not decide what color I liked it in best. And the combination of colors turned out to be exactly what this piece was looking for and it all worked out in the end anyways. And then I'm going to go back through in my blue again. And I'm not really sure what happened with the feathers. I think that my paints are quite dried out because they were classroom stock. And so I did have a little bit of trouble with how sticky and thick the paints were at times. The next thing that I'm going to do is cover up all the lettering and then I'm going to take a gesso wash and I'm just going to spatter it all over because I did want a little bit more contrast and some more highlights to this entire page. So I allowed the big drops to go in the background and then I added a whole bunch of fine drops all over the, the top portion of it. And that is that. That is the end of the project. Once everything was there, I added my key that has the word heart on it, and then I was finished and ready to put it up on my wall. Here's all the details up close, all the different colors and details in there. Right from bottom to top, there's nothing that's not interesting on this piece. Here are my feathers and the finished piece. Thanks for watching this episode of Mixed Media Monday. If you like this, don't forget to share, subscribe, and leave a comment.